Hi, this is Atco and the little girl. I put out a few videos about the history of recording media and from all of those I've only talked about the analog media. But today, since all current mass production of recording media is done today, um, it's, it's all done in digital format. So with this video I'd like to talk about a little of the CDs and the MP3s and the digital files. But with the with analog recording a record or a tape is made directly from the source. Playing it back and you'll hear just what you had recorded. The best reproduction that you'll ever get will be from the, the first time it's played. From there, every time it's played, very slowly, you'll start losing quality based on uh, wear of the tape or scratches or dirt or etc. Uh, that occurred to the, the media. But then in 1980s, uh, Sony and Philips uh, pioneered the compact disc where an audio source is converted into digital numbers called bits and then those bits are saved as a file. You can't hear the digital numbers uh, by itself but you can reconvert the digital numbers back into analog and then hear the sound again. Every time you play a CD or an MP3 file the player actually reconverts a fresh recording from the original source to the, the audio sound. So with digital, we no longer have to deal with pops and scratches and wear that we've always had to deal with with our vinyl records and tapes. So what makes a sound turn into digital, like a CD? Well, let's first start with an analog sound. Here's a simple representation of an analog sound wave. This is what we might hear. To convert the sound to digital numbers, a program is used called an encoder that slices that sound and then they measure the amplification of those slices into digital numbers called bits and then those bits are saved to a file. To play it back the numbers convert those measurements back into a wave by using a program called a decoder then we can allow it to us to hear the sound again. Now my pictures are simplified of course. Those slices are actually measured 44,100 times a second and saved as digital bits to an audio CD. And the reason for that, there's a very big range of an analog sound that you have to slice and to measure for an actual analog sound to your good. But even with that, an analog sound would have basically unlimited range through all of the original source. So could your ears perceive then coming back the, the digital files back to sound and would they sound as good as the original analog source? Well most people probably would but some people cannot. That's why vinyl records are prized by audiophiles because of the better reproduction of analog recordings. There's actually a, a little resurgence of vinyl records uh, being made today. 
But for most of us though, we can enjoy the digital CDs and have that great plus that we won't lose quality of the sound from playing it over and over again. Every time you hear a file from a CD, we'll hear the sound as it sounded first the first time it was played. Now, digital CD music files are, are great, but the files can get rather big. For any average song today, a file can be about 40 megs or of size or, or bigger. When you've got a 700 meg available on a audio CD, that's not really a, a big deal. But, since they are now digital files, you can copy that file to your computer or upload it or download it through the internet. Uh, a regular audio CD though file uh, can take a while to transfer. So in the 1990s, there were some designers from a group called the Movie Picture Expert Group or known as MPEG. They developed a compression program for music um, and of course they call that MPEG. MPEG engineers realized that there is a lot of sound that we hear all the time. Analog recordings will pick up everything. But not everything of the sound is actually perceived by the ear. For example, uh, there are a lot of really low frequencies that our ears don't pick up and there's a lot of very high frequencies that our ears don't pick up, but they're there. Have you ever blown into a, a, a dog whistle? Uh, it puts out a very high frequency sound that, that comes out. The dogs hear it, but uh, we don't hear it from our ears. That's because the frequency is is higher for the dogs here that can perceive than what our ears can. Here's another example. Let's, uh, let's say you want to relax a little bit and uh, you're going to read a book. You want a little soft music in the background um, while you're relaxing and, and enjoying your book. All of a sudden your son has a hip-hop boombox and it's running loud and he's coming in the room and he's just walking from one side of the room to the other right back where you're watching uh, reading your book. By the time he leaves out of the room in that time, you hear that boombox, but uh, my guess is you didn't hear any of the, the soft music that was in the background during that time he walked by. You didn't hear it, but it was there. That sound is there on the analog. Your, your ears can only pick up all of it at one time. So what MPEG does to compress. They delete or reduce some parts of the recording that are considered uh, beyond the ability of most people to hear. If you take care, if you take parts of those out, then the file gets smaller. This method of compressing is called um, perceptual coding. There's a, a very complicated algorithm that converts the sound into a smaller file. But it's working out pretty well. You can adjust how much compression you want, but at a point you're going to start realizing that you're losing 
quality. Today using MPEG version 3 or MP3, a digital file from an audio CD can be compressed to a near CD uh, quality at 70-80% of compression. Some people are happy with higher compression that can go up to 90%. So it's up to what each listener prefers or how much space you wish to save. When I was a kid, back in the 60s, my dad had a, an old Wurlitzer jukebox. It was made in the 40s. He got it used from a, an old uh, restaurant. And it was cool because we used to take that old Wurlitzer down into the basement and it had 24 selections on it. And what was cool is that you could go in there and you could play any of those songs you wanted at any time by pressing one of those buttons and have all those 24 selections available. We thought that was cool. That old Wurlitzer weighed about 300 pounds. Today with my iPod, I have the ability to save 10,000 compressed songs at any time and I can put that iPod in my hand and press anything I want off that at any time. It's amazing how much has happened in my lifetime in the recording media history. So, to close, I, I've gone through about uh, five videos now about uh, the history of recording media. And uh, I hope that uh, you might want to get onto my channel and uh, watch any of these. Uh, for now, this is Atco and Little Girl signing off.